Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back after the break. You're watching Towards the Origin in conversation with Sheikh Qadi Lutfur Rahman on our tonight's topic for discussion, which is holiday, a blessing of Allah. Sheikh, we have listened to the first segment mm -hmm. where you've discussed and touched upon yeah. the story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, and we have looked into the lessons, morals, uh, yeah. morals that we can take. Now, one of the morals that if we think from this perspective, that we in our society, especially that we live in, as in people who are elderly or people of our, uh, our father generation, there's, there is that sort of gap that people who are young should not either engage with people who are elderly, mm -hmm. should not yes, interact, should yes. not. They might see, take it as if you are arguing with someone elderly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, obviously, our youth, especially within the mm -hmm. subconscious community, mm -hmm. are very well aware of it. Mm -hmm. And due to which, sometimes, even there might be some genuineness, Agreed. there will be some um, valid points, according to the that needs to be the made by young children. Young children. Yes. But obviously, if they make it, maybe the parents would take it a different way. How did they, how did do you um, balance it and make sure that the the message is heard across yes. and at the same time it's not offended at the other, um, to the other side? Yes, that's right. Um, Sometimes if we don't listen to our young people, we may miss some wisdoms. Even Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi he consulted some of the young junior Sahaba, Sahaba radiallahu anhum, like Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, some of the young junior Sahaba were consulted in, in, in many, many occasions. Uh, yes, I understand that it's important uh, to take the opinions of our children or maybe engage in dialogue <coughs> and discussion. Uh, in our, uh, maybe like back home, like or maybe um, people from uh, Asian subcontinent, the, the or, the Arab, yeah, yeah. Uh, or the Muslim or the, world in Muslim general, general yeah. we find that we say the children are not allowed to say anything. They're just like, shan't. Or just, even just, just put it don't way. say anything. Put it this way: even mm. in massages, when children go yeah. into, I mean, unfortunately, we have to be slightly uh, balanced and be mm. critical about mm. certain things that we see around in a massage. Mm. That children might they, they find they, or they feel discouraged to going to a massage yeah. because they have been treated as if they shouldn't be standing in yeah. some sub or they That's should be right. staying at the but back. But it's changing. But it's changing. Our, our 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 adults, our elderly people are also changing. But still, more work needs to be done, and uh, children need to definitely they have to feel comfortable in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the correct tarbiyah. This is when they, they learn how to be in an environment like mosque. Um, I've heard from people saying, that, oh, I, when I go to mosque, I get told off. Yes, so that's, that's the, the one of the complaints that I mean, the youth is, makes. This is not yeah. how it's supposed to be. This is not how our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was. Um, but at the same time, children, some of the children here, maybe like in this society where we live, may be argumentative. So sometimes they do not understand the difference between discussion and, and, and arguments. Hmm. They would say, I'm discussing with you, but they're constantly arguing. The akhlaq, the yes, manner. So, so I think most of the children, or most of the people, even only children, but even adults, we, we sometimes get lost in <coughs> between discussion and argument. So what is discussion? Discussion is that you just put your point through. You, you put your points forward. Engaging in a respectful manner. Exactly. Hmm. Once uh, you have done it, then you don't force or you don't pressure on, on especially the elderly person to, to go uh, to listen or to follow. Uh, if we start pressuring or if we want to prove our point in a forceful way, then that becomes an argument. And that's when we have to stop. And Islam doesn't support uh, the arguments which can lead to uh, disrespect and, and, and very very true yeah. but if we look on the other side as well mm. elderly community as well mm. obviously if the child or the children are not understanding mm. it being the elderly person mm. should we not be able to be in a position to accommodate them understand them not hear them definitely, patiently definitely. No, no, and maybe should be tolerance. guide them there to must the right be direction tolerance. As, I, as I said uh, there must be tolerance but as I said we have to make a balance uh, the stance here sometimes we see the children <coughs> or people have more tendency to our argumentative uh, modes and whereas on the other side we have People don't want to discuss or even talk. You just keep Basically, quiet. Basically, yeah, we have to do something yeah, in between. Yes, yes, exactly. Now, going back to the, again, just the lessons from the story of Ibrahim, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibrahim alayhi wa sallam lived at a time when he faced a challenge, uh, faced a lot of challenges. He faced the death, he faced the burning um, alive. Uh, and we, many of us, we complain, oh, we live in a society where lots of difficulties outside, we come, it's just difficult to be a Muslim. And it's true, it's true, it's difficult to be a Muslim. Um, the, the society, the majority, the environment, the temptations, musics, whatever, like available in the society, which is constantly inviting us to, uh, to, uh, to, towards a path which, which is quite far from the remembrance of Allah, the Almighty. 
all of those things are different, especially nowadays racism, and then you've got Islamophobia. Now, different that Islam, sort of attacks are yeah, coming forward. Yeah, we Islam have seen. is presented as Islam has been presented in a way it's it's, it's scary, it's it's bad, it's oppressive. All those things that we're watching and hearing and listening from the but, media. But having, but having said that, these are the live challenges today. But one thing we also must need to address: the challenges was there throughout the history. Exactly. Now we're going to come to Ibrahim. So Ibrahim Ali Sassam, even he even faced more difficulties, but yet he remains steadfast. Now the thing is, a child, a person, when he's steadfast and when he knows he's following the truth, then people around him will change. He will not change. So Muslims. Young children are people that we influence others and we don't get influenced by others. This is very, very important. And we need to build that confidence. Ibrahim salam was 13, but he managed to prove the oneness of Allah and the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, even though many of us, we think nowadays that our parents, they give us too much instruction. Parents say, oh, pray Fajr, pray Salah, uh, wake up early, or don't watch this, or don't see, don't, I mean, in don't simple listen terms, to the do's and don'ts are quite a lot yeah, to follow. Yeah, quite a lot to follow. Uh, and then many of our young children, they say, oh, my parents don't understand, like, you know, um, they just like, you know, uh, from back home, they don't understand. So they make comments, and some of the children... Some, some, some may say there's a generation gap between us yes. and our parents. Yes, there is gaps, but some children also um, would say, well, um, would, would make even like some racist comments. Oh, freshie. Like, have you, have you heard of that word? Yes. So he's just a freshie. We don't understand that we, amongst ourselves, we are racist sometimes. Because we, some of us, we grew up here, we were brought up here, we say whoever comes from back home, he's, he's a freshie. So we kind of make racist comments because he's not from here. We forget that when we go to the dark country, we will be a freshie as well because we don't know, we're not uh, aware of First the, of all, we yeah. know that it's in a civilized society, mm -hmm. especially living in a developed mm -hmm. country, we mm -hmm. know there is an etiquette, there's yeah. manners in place, yes, yeah. and we should do call each other with respect. Exactly, yes. So if we expect respect for yeah. ourselves, should we not give yeah. respect to others? Definitely, so we have to be very careful. So parents make instructions, but we, as children, we need to understand that they love us the most. They may be overprotective at, at times, but they want the best for us. I know that sometimes parents not only always handle, human beings make mistakes, make mistakes indeed. but parents want the best for their children. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, even though he lived with his father who was an idol worshipper, but do you know how he um, spoke to his father? He said, Ya Abati. What does Abati mean? Abi in Arabic means father, but Abati is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a very l uh, loving way of addressing Is it my father. dear father? My dear father, yes. Mm. Like, like Ya Bunayi. So Ibn in Arabic means son, but Bunayi is, is a very uh, like a loving way of addressing a son. So people who understand the, the grammar, the yeah. language of Arabic, Arabic can languages. understand that it's not only respectful, but at the same time, there is that utmost respect, dignity, and this closeness there. There's yes. a strong bond there when closed yes. by so that name. So parents may be even like sometimes non-Muslims, but Islam say we must respect our parents. Teachers may be non-Muslims, but Islam say you must respect and be uh, uh, show your honor to your uh, teachers. And there is a reason for that because does not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah al isra mention right after his commandment, who does he mention? Yeah. Parents. After the rights of Allah, rights of parents. So which straight gives away. us a straight importance there. And I, I normally say that the best person is the one who is best to his Lord and best to his parents. Obviously, there are other uh, people Avenues, there, yes. but, but these are the top priorities, which many of us, we forget. Now, Ibrahim Hassan, he showed his respect to his father, even though he disagreed with him in his belief and in his faith. Now, holiday, come back to our topic today. Holiday is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do I say that? Because free time is a favor. Sometimes we come to a position, a stage in our life that we have no time. We have no time. I have heard people saying that we have no time for ourselves. We have no time to even, a some people phrase. say can't even go to the bathroom, some yeah. people say. But yes, this uh, um, busyness in life, it can be a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Allah can test someone by giving this kind of responsibilities. But being free is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what I want to mention, a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. A hadith mentioned in the book of Imam uh, uh, Al-Hakim, where he said, Prophet said, um, 
may capitalize five things before five things, before five uh, situations come. So capitalize or take advantage. Then he said, Shababaka qabla haramik. Your youth before you become old. Today your youth, you're strong, you can do things, you can perform hard, you can perform... So <coughs> well, there'll be a day when you want to, but you can't because you're going to lose your wudu. Is everything uh, you can't even uh, stand properly. Put it in this way: uh, we have seen even when we we know youth are very energetic, very strong, mm. but we see a lot of youth are suffering from disease and illness like cancers. Yes, 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 when you visit mm. the hospice, when you visit the hospitals, the cancer specialist hospitals, you do see children at the age of ten, yeah, people yeah, at yeah, the age yeah. of so eighteen yes. even suffer from those kind of yeah. illnesses. Yes, yes. Um, so Professor Hassan, he said, your youth before you become old. And then he said, what you just said now, your good health before you fall ill. Nobody knows, nobody has the guarantee. Today you might be the best, most fit and most healthy person, but tomorrow you might have a lot of illnesses and disease. So we can't guarantee. So he said, take advantage. When you are healthy, do something. Because when you are unwell, you won't be able to do. How many people, they cry because they can't fast. There are people coming to masjid and speaking to imams, oh, we want to pray, we want to fast in, in the month of Ramadan, but because of uh, we are, because we're diabetic, we've got other illnesses, so we can't fast. Then Prophet Sallallahu he said, your wealth before you become poor, you might be wealthy today, tomorrow you might be bankrupt, you don't know. Um, so and we've seen people have, in the history yeah, yeah. that were known to be wealthy, but then again, they've lost every single Everything, thing. yes. So when you have money, Spend in the path of Allah because it's an amana from Allah. It's it's just Allah gave you to test you. If money is, is is it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But people when they have money they start feeling pride and become arrogant. But money is a, is, is an amana, it's a trust from Allah. So so utilize in the right way. Um just to under clarify Sarah, that people when they understand, especially about this in um, issue, when they um, the thing that people might understand when it comes to when you have money. The first thought that Muslim might think is just to donate charity, mm. but it's not only related, donation. it's not only donation yeah. limited. It could be utilizing money to bring about a change in the society. Yeah, yeah, investment so it's in not the right way. Investment in the right way. So it's not only about investment. Building a, a, a balanced and, and just economy. Economy, that's, that's what the it most is. important a thing. A fair economy. Fair economy oh. where people can live. In, in a fairly in society. So it's not only restricted to donation Just to charity, or message, no, no. no. It's a, because this is what the people have misconceptions. It's a bigger, yeah. much wider concept, Absolutely isn't it? Absolutely right. And now, then his Prophet said, وَفَرَاغَكَ قَبْلَ شُغْلِكَ Your time, your free time before you become busy. Today you might be free, tomorrow you might be so busy that you, yeah. ha you will have no time to uh, probably even look after or look after yourself. So, وَحَيَاتَكَ قَبْلَ And the last thing he said, your life before your death. Your death. So, take advantage from your life. As long as you're alive, do something for Allah. Now, um, Prophet said that your time, so time is a blessing from Allah and we must utilize correctly and wisely. And this is the reason why Allah the Almighty, He revealed a surah. Do you know what the surah is? It's about time. There's a surah about time called Wal Asr. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wal Asr, He swears by time. He, he takes oath by I, the I, time. I, yeah. takes, I take oath by time. Uh, why Allah doesn't take oath by anything without a reason, unless the ma subject is hugely uh, uh, important. And, and there is no reason for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take even oath. So yes. Is it not to signify the importance exactly. of the concept? So he said, well, Fajr, uh, by Fajr, he said, well, duha, by, the, by the time of duha. So he takes oath by certain things to show the importance of it. Mm. So he said, well, Asr. <coughs> Absolutely, he swears and he takes oath by time. Why? Because time is important. Time is precious. Time is gold. And businessmen, they say time is money. But we say time is life. And um, so every time, we, every, every minute that goes from us, the life is actually is been deducted um, from our uh, hayat, this hayat, ad dunya, the, the worldly time. life. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Yawma yatadhakkarul insan. Today you waste your time, one day you'll realize there will be a day when people will realize, they will say, if only I did that, if only I did this, if only I brought this forward for the Allah. The element of regret will be there. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. But that regret will not benefit at all. Now time is precious, my young children. Life is more than fun and games. Yes, we are allowed to be happy and live joyously in this world. But we have to balance it out. Um, we have to think more deeply and profoundly just the way we said Ibrahim did. So we have fun in his time. 
the way it's been um, maybe like maintained or specified by our elders or parents. But it's not about just games and fun like some children. They just want to have fun <coughs> all the time. Not only just children, but society is so, is even adults. People only attend the occasions which are fun. Do you know that? Believe me, you invite people to some of the events and they're like to learn, benefit, you'll find, you'll hardly find people. But there's fun involved from some of the weddings, some of the um, other occasions, you'll see people. Which, which, are not, which, we, which Islam does not say anything no, against no, it, but, but should but, needs but, to be done with yes, measurement. Yes, exactly, yes. And, and um, we, we need to see how prophets and how the, uh, the, the predecessors and how the early generations did. And that's, we can, we can learn a lot of lessons from their lives. Now, it's not only about fun and game. Um, so therefore, what we need to do, um, we, our children must make a plan Children, you should make a plan for this summer holiday, how you can utilize and make most out of your time. Yes, you studied, worked very hard. You studied hard. You went to school every day, um, early morning, 8 o'clock, 8.30, 9. Very hard work. So you've done a lot. MashaAllah, you've achieved. You, congratulations, Mubarak. Some of you went to even evening schools, even weekend schools. So Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless you and reward you for that. But during the summer holiday, let's not make this holiday as a time of just wasting because uh, Muslims, as I said, are always productive. Even if they watch something, then they will see if there's any benefit. So the most important thing that you <coughs> may have fun, but you always have an intention behind that fun that you are achieving or benefiting some ways. Even if you think, oh, I want to have some fun so that I can relax my mind and I can have some free time so that I can go back to... And, and, and there is a misconception that Islam is not against fun itself by no, itself. No, of course not. Islam is not against itself as an entertainment, the word, but as long as it's done within the parameters it's exactly. laid by the Sharia. Yeah, yes, 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 as I, yes, that's true. Um, so, uh, so making a plan means that you include a bit of everything in your timetable. So basically the crucial aspect here is mm. planning. Planning. And I think yeah. the elders may also engage and participate yeah. and yes. have an active role involved there. Involved, yes. Um, I would say that uh, focusing on Quran would be a best, one of the best things that we can do during summer holiday. Because children, we, we spend about eight hours a day in school. How much time do we spend for uh, learning the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So this could be a good opportunity for those who don't know how to read Quran, they can probably learn. Maybe hire a teacher, a private tuition, or maybe go to a, a class. That's what needs to be done by the parents. The parents mm. can, can probably arrange something. But that needs to also, the interest have to come from the children because how much force will be made by parents or oh, read, read, read. No, there has to be also some interest from us as children. Um, so focusing on Quran, because Quran is the best thing you can have. Uh, I remember um, uh, listening to one of the scholars saying, teach your children Quran and Quran will teach them everything. Hmm. So the best give, the gift that you can give to your children is, is the Quran itself. It's, it's a treatment, it's a remedy, it's a healing, it's, it's, it's a treatment for uh, our inner dimension as well as our society. Now the problem here would be as children by itself would be very difficult, they might find it very boring. No, of course. So yeah. that's why, would it not be encouraged mm. to find groups or find the youth mm. conferences or groups where the youth participate yeah. and engage in a fun and productive manner. Yes, yeah, yes, possibly, yeah. We can, we can do, we, if we, as I said, um, the methods can be used, the best methods, the methods can, can uh, pe where people can, children can enjoy. But uh, as I, the intention and, and purpose should be benefiting, even though it's, it's a fun like, the method is, 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 is through fun, the fun and, and entertainment, but the, the purpose should be benefiting. Um, also, uh, I think children should observe the salah during this time. Now, maybe in the school days, it could be difficult to wake up for Fajr, uh, difficult for uh, to pray maybe Isha because it's late. But now it's holiday time. It can be a wonderful opportunity to train ourselves to, to um, pray our salah on time. But just to clarify, even if it's if a children has reached the puberty, mm -hmm. obviously we know salah is fard. Yep. So there is we are not in, we're not advocating the fact that they shouldn't be praying, but obviously we understand yeah, how difficult difficulty is, yes. in engaging it. Maybe this can be an opportunity for us to train ourselves to be Practice ready ourselves, for the whole yeah. year. Yes. So focus a lot on salah. Parents also, especially the fathers, should take the sons to the masjid if possible uh, because that's a way to also take them out because 
being home, a difficult situation in this country is that children are home all time. Like well, in, today, in this generation, you have nothing to do. I mean, everything is, that's there. Yes. It's all indoors. So yeah, the, indoors. Why, the, the and children is not feel children, they need to go outdoors. And that's the reason why children are uh, going towards the TV and all the gadgets and, and phones and uh, laptops and they they just can I, I, I think obviously the per se obviously if it's monitored if it's having a proper balance is maintained mm. and the parents are aware mm. what the children are using those luxury yeah, for what that, they that's, a that's must. one of the must in, in every you can't give them the absolute in, freedom in, just in, in case in all they circumstance, might go astray. in all circumstances that has to be observed but again um, this shouldn't be the only thing uh, i think one of the ways we can engage our children maybe we can take them outside um, to play maybe in local parks and, not, or maybe and, and another thing there are a lot of museums around there's a lot of yes. educational things mm, around programs. even in the country that we live in mm. there are a lot of seminars lot of that things, make, yes. a lot of youthful activities are going Engagement. around alhamdulillah also maybe some of the events that are taking place especially mm. islamic events where children can go and <coughs> also take part in, in in islamic events because it's difficult for sometimes the children to act on his own but when yeah. it's with the group yeah with a larger society that's then i right. think it would be uh, easy for the children to yeah. interact that, that's very very true also summer schools are there like there are a lot of summer schools mm. so i think parents maybe should take make some efforts to take them to summer schools where rather than just wasting the time in at home uh, watching like unnecessary things then probably they can learn something they can benefit from summer schools that are available in many masjids mashallah uh, many organizations are coming are forward with that. Now, the other element of uh, looking into this aspect is as well as parents at the end of the day should we not sit together with our children to find out how was their day what have they been up to yeah. what have they learnt it's some I sort mean, of some uh, sort of activity some sort of engagement should be there yes, because and especially, recap. Mm. Because especially during school holidays we've seen children has to go a strict time to bed and so on mm. whereas when it comes to these kind of uh, holidays mm. should the parents and children both not utilize the time to bridge the gap that was does there and bond themselves together with the parents make to make sure at an, an engaging event at home. one of the best things that can be done is eating together and I remember my father used to be very strict on that. He says he used to say, wherever you are, when we eat, we have to eat together. So eating together as family can actually create a very beautiful bond. And also praying salah, eating together, having meals, and also praying salah together can create a lot of beautiful bonds amongst yeah. the members of the families. Um, one other thing that children should be doing is helping parents. It's very, very important. We don't get time during the, uh, uh, the school days but summer holiday is a very wonderful opportunity to be there for our parents, especially mothers. The, the, the mature children can help your mothers at home. And um, generally, you know yourself best. Uh, what I said um, is also I, I, I encourage myself uh, to be a good parent. I encourage myself to be a good marabbi. And uh, also, uh, the children, I hope you have enjoyed and you've learned something today. Uh, Mela, bless you and reward you. Anshal, thank you very much. It's a perfect time with this. We have come to the conclusion. Thank you very much for joining with us and sharing your wonderful uh, thoughts and uh, knowledge with us. Barakallah fikum. Jazakumullah khairan. With this, my dear viewers, we have come to the conclusion of our tonight's program. We have been discussing about holiday, a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have heard the story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. We have heard a lot of examples given by the Sheikh, how to engage with our youth, how the youth can engage, how can the youth and the parents use their time constructively to engage with their children and make productivity out of it. And the most important, the crucial element that we have learned from this, our tonight's discussion is planning. We have to plan. And in this world that we live, in, we know that if you have to be successful in one limb, even the world matters, our planning needs to be there in place. Similarly with us Muslims, it's very essential for every Muslim to plan our day and make sure that that plan, the ultimate goal is to attain the Jannah in the year after. With this, my dear bro brothers and sisters, we have come to the conclusion of our tonight's discussion, inshallah. We hope you have found the program educational, informative and interactive. Until we meet again, subhanakallahumma bihamdika, shadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfirka wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Sheikh.